Hi all, I'd like to do a series of videos looking at Nemzovich's famous saying, the threat is stronger than the execution. I want to really ask why this might be the case. Why is the threat often stronger than the actual execution of that threat? I'm going to choose um, four of my games in total as a sort of framework for discussing this and I'll pose some theories and, and, and reasons that I think that um, the threat's often stronger and here is one game from last Thursday I was playing an IM on board one because I was playing uh, for Muswell Hill and um, the opposing team um, had John Cox who um, is about 215 ECF he kicked off with D4 and I was experimentally playing the Slav defence so this was like one of the first over the board games I played the Slav because I, I think it's kind of a nice modern sort of classical opening, still, you know, with the grip on D5. Um, we've done a few videos on it. I did show you my previous win with it, so I'm on one out of two with it at the moment. So this was my first game with it, though, prior to that previous game I showed you. And although I lost this, I, I had quite good chances, as we'll see. Uh, I managed to blow them. So, um, after knight f3, knight f6, he played knight c3. And I played e6. And um, in a positional sense, you know, the Slav is potentially, you know, weakening these dark squares. And you're hemming in this bishop. But uh, the plan is to, to liberate this bishop later. And to this end, after bishop g5, knight d7, after e3, I played um, bishop d6. Uh, because I have a long-term idea of you know, later playing d takes c4 followed by e5 to potentially liberate this bishop, you know, on, on this um, diagonal. And also, you know, generally the pieces, that's a standard sort of freeing manoeuvre. After bishop d3, I actually play it immediately, you know, dc, b takes c4, and decide actually to try and, you know, put it on b7. So I played b5, after bishop d3, I play a6. So the idea is now bishop b7 and c5. Something went badly wrong with my first strategic plan, I ended up much worse positionally. And especially this c5 square, because it's on, you know, this semi-open file, if white gets a rook there, they can actually tie you down quite badly on this square, as we're about to see. After castles, I played my queen to the wrong place, I think. Uh, Ribka thinks, you know, like h6 or queen b6 or queen c7. Um, queen c7 looks a little bit you know, risky potentially, because, you know, rook c1 and the rook is like, you know, eyeing up the queen. But this apparently, you know, is okay. If we look at the concrete variations, why isn't threatening knight takes b5 or anything at the moment? Because, you know, b5 is, is reinforced with both the pawns. So, say black plays um, castles, this might be okay. e4, and now, maybe h6 here, after bishop takes... Maybe G takes. But, to be honest, this doesn't look that great for black. So maybe I, I have played the opening slightly wrong. I think, actually, earlier in this bishop G5 system, when when white played bishop G5, I think the line actually goes D takes C4. And E4, and this is kind of um, book stuff, where, you know, this, this kind of happens. H6, and then this... Um, there's a lot of theory on this. I think Botvinnik was an exponent in this um, line. There's a classic game, I think Denko versus Botvinnik, a radio match um, played in the 60s. And I should have really gone in for this line and accepted the tactical complexity. Um, so anyway, after bishop g5, you see the thing is, you know, white's quicker now to get in this rook c1 and, and tie down black on the c5 square. So I think that's why it's important to play that line and, you know, accept this gambit. So the way I played it, you know, we'll see it's a positional disaster to start off with because I don't manage to liberate my, my c8 bishop. In fact, visually, it's going to look really terrible, especially now I lash out with g5 instead of routinely casting because I'm also concerned about white playing knight e4. So I, I relieve that pin at the expense of weakening myself further and weakening the dark squares now. I play bishop b7, he plays knight e4, so he's really tie me down on the c5 square so it's not great 
Eye Castle, and look at this bishop. It's you know like um, completely hemmed in, and White's got that ideal control over that that c5 square. So without my dark squared bishop, and with with the semi-open file, White can also put pressure on that sensitive square. He plays now a4, which has a slight liability cause, the b4 square, which we'll see later becomes tactically important. You know, so king b8, queen e2. I play e5, and all of a sudden. You know, the evaluation switch switches quite badly now in my favour, because I play the move knight d5 here, because he was threatening, you know, a takes b, and if a takes b, maybe bishop takes to get onto the c7 square with his queen. So with knight d5, I'm not only defending c7, I'm also threatening knight b4. And now he plays a blunder, he plays d takes e5. And materially, I, I can I can force the winner material now with this knight b4, queen moves, knight takes d3, queen takes, now knight takes e5. And all of a sudden, according to Ripka, I'm dead equal, or even better here. And I forcefully now win the exchange with knight d3. So I'm attacking the knight as well as the rook. But I expect them to use an exchange sacrifice, a positional exchange sacrifice, which seems entirely logical given my previous strategic mistakes, especially the dark squares, you know, the loss of the dark square bishop, and why it's bind on c5 in particular. So he simply plays knight c5, which actually I had expected. But before accepting this, I had worked out that at least I would have a liberating counter exchange sacrifice if this other knight joins on the dark square attack to go to d4. Um, you know, would my position be really, really bleak that these knights would be attacking so many squares in my position? You know, this one, you know, attacking all these squares, and this one, all of these squares, and, you know, as well as that threat of a takes b5 and rook a1, these two knights combined with all this stuff, it, se it seems to be a positional disaster. But let's, let's consider um, the discussion for the moment. Why is the threat often stronger than the execution? What am I actually concerned about here? You know, two very powerfully, you know, well-placed knights, yes, but I would be the exchange up. So actually doing a counter-positional exchange check would be just levelling material to try and get rid of the pressure. And that's what I did. I played knight takes c1. After rook takes c1, I play rook d5, which is actually a move uh, in, in Ribka's top um, selection, at least top five, I think. So I'm prepared now to just play rook takes c5. So visually he gets the fantastic knights. But um, it seems this positional torture is over just as quickly, you know, in a, in a lightning strike. It's just gone after rook takes c5, queen takes c5. So the queens come off. And now I, f I simply play b takes a4. And I'm not sure I'm that much uh, worse here. Um, although maybe, you know, he misplayed it a bit. Knight takes c6 check. He played now, so he's, so there's no more of this um, pressure. We're just going into a raw rook and pawn ending, and it seems you know the worst has been um, dealt with. So I played bishop takes c6, rook takes c6, and now I play king b7, and he played actually um, what he thought after the game was an inaccuracy, as though rook f6 was the way to win, and what he played was inferior. But actually, Ribka likes his move, which was rook c4. Let's have a quick look, actually, at that. Rook f6, rook c8, and apparently I'm equal. So rook takes king b6. If my king starts marching down, I'll be, you know, getting this pawn quite dangerous. You know, that's quite a dangerous pass pawn, if I can win b2. So here... Say f4, check, rook c2. It looks as though, you know, Ribka thinks this is dead equal. King b7 and white has nothing better than um, to start checking soon with uh, rook f7 and rook f8, just, just threatening um, check. So if I go back, just, just checking. So that's why I think he can't leave this a4 pawn. So what he did was very accurate. Just, just rook c4. So how did I manage to mess up this position?